I'm Tom Baker, this is Chasing Cars, and behind me is one of the best cars in the world. This is the upgraded 2024 Audi S8. And like most of the best cars in the world, this thing doesn't come cheap. What I'm here to tell you is that even over $300,000 drive away, which this vehicle is, you still feel like you're getting value for money. Has my head exploded? How is that possibly the case? I hope to show you in today's video. In some ways, this is a car you have to drive in order to really understand it, but I'm gonna do my best with the English language to communicate it to you now. This one is particularly elegant in its specification. Firmament blue with the high gloss styling package, meaning we have the classic Audi S car, matte aluminum mirrors, we've got a chrome grille. This car passes you by on the street, you're probably not even gonna remember what it is. And with the Audi S8, that's the point. Before we get started, hit subscribe below. Chasing Cars, honest reviews of your next car. Brought to you by Budget Direct. What I mean by that comment is that unlike the BMW 7 Series and in many ways the Mercedes-Benz S-Class, Audi does not intend for the A8 to be an extroverted car. Instead, this vehicle is an exercise in simplicity and being understated. It is the epitome of quiet opulence and quiet luxury. That's what its buyers like. And in Australia, that's about 10 people per year that buy S8s and we've never heard of them. Probably because they are very, very well off and powerful people, but they're not the kind of people that need to shout about their wealth. Those people are driving G-Wagons and Bentaygas and what have you, and that's fine. But extroverted cars like G-Wagons wouldn't appeal to the kind of people that want an S8. That's where the difference is. This car is not intended to be a volume seller. It is for a very small group of Audi customers who are extremely loyal to the S8 and they come back and they buy another S8 after they're done with this one. I think that's one thing I want to communicate strongly about this car. And to that end, there are other ways in which the S8 is not shouty. It actually doesn't bombard you with technology, this car. Again, to a lesser degree than a 7 Series or an S-Class is this car overtly techy. It's still got plenty of cool stuff. It's got amazing tweeters from Bang & Olufsen that rise out of the dashboard as a part of the $19,000 sensory package in this vehicle. And it does have some cool tricks like air vents that reveal themselves to you when you get in the car. And the screens are plenty and the technology is all, you know, very, very capable. But once you've got it set up, it actually just leaves you alone. This car doesn't have a vibe to it, which is that it's techie for the sake of being techie. Instead, it's there to assist you and then shut up. And that's exactly the point in a car like the S8. Now for Australia, the S8 is very highly specified as standard. There are not many options that you need. The aforementioned sensory package does upgrade the stereo, but it's mainly about rear seat comfort, which for most S8 customers will be irrelevant because this is a car that you drive yourself. So I don't really think you need any options at all. You already get a 3D Bang & Olufsen stereo as standard. So I'd probably even skip the sensory pack entirely. In the inside of this particular S8, we've got a dark theme, but this car can be ordered with other interiors and you can also access Audi's exclusive program with the S8 too. So you can have any color you like outside. For instance, the quality in here is generally very good. Lots of leather on even the secondary surfaces. This car does have one minor rattle, unfortunately, down here near the driver's window switches. When you turn the base up very strongly on this stereo, it brings that out. If this was my car, I'd probably go and try and have some extra insulation put in there. But that's the only issue I've found with this particular test car. The seats themselves are actually more of a comfort seat than a sports seat. You can inflate the bolsters through the touchscreen. You do have massage, heating, cooling, the works, and they're very comfortable, but they're not designed to hold you in really tight. They have got a bit more room to breathe, which in a car like this is probably appropriate. As for that tech, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is included. Dedicated climate screen down here is pretty easy to use, and the virtual cockpit remains the best in the business for graphics and customizability. So I like all of that very much. In terms of storage, that's probably one weak spot. Small cup holders down here, a very small space between the seats with this cool double opening center box and really small and shallow door bins. So for such a big car, there's actually not that many places to stash things. If you're eagle-eyed, you might have noticed a change in the ride height in the previous shot where I was sitting in the front seat and it might even happen again here in the back seat. That's because this car has predictive active air suspension, which makes the ride quality very good, 
but the car jumps up to greet you. When you open the door, the ride height immediately lifts to make the car easier to get into, effectively raising the hip point to the height of an all-road wagon or an SUV before sinking back down to adopt that sort of cheetah stance for better aerodynamics and better performance. I mean, that is the kind of thing you want when you're paying this sort of money, which is a lot of money, but the S8 feels worth it in my opinion. Now, I also mentioned before, this car has been optioned with a package that favors people in the back. So we have this outrageous command center in the center console here with controls for uh, lumbar and adjustments for the rear seat, which is all very nice. A rear seat remote here. We've got additional cup holders. So if you are actually planning on driving this for the benefit of people in the back seat, then you probably will want to tick the sensory package box. But for me, I'd buy an S8 for myself. This is actually the A8 you want to drive yourself in. Don't bother with giving your kids access to power lumbar in the back. I think they'll probably be able to manage. Some interesting stuff though here, we've got carbon fiber on the backs of the seats, air vents, but also two cigarette lighters because you wouldn't even have to wait 10 seconds for your mate over here to light up their cigarette. Please don't smoke in this car, by the way. Although even if you did, you'll notice the fragrance being dispensed just to calm you down. And you know what? It works. This car really is calming. All those nice materials continue back here. Beautiful like suede headlining in this car and power operated sunrests because again, at this sort of price, you don't even want to have to do the manual labor of lifting up a sun blind, do you? Moving around the back of this Firmament Blue S8 now, the main thing you're gonna notice is not much. It looks like virtually any other Audi sedan from the rear. And that again is the point. This car is designed to be understated. With the high gloss package, you do get some chrome around here. I think it suits the car and the quad tailpipes, which are a staple of Audi's S cars. First thing I'd do though is remove the S8 badge because you don't need to advertise when you have a car like this. Just you knowing what it's capable of is good enough. Open up the standard power boot lid and you find a voluminous boot. Those back seats don't fold, so this is kind of all you get. You have got a net, however, which is going to prevent stuff from rolling around and underneath that boot floor is only a goo kit. No spare wheel in this car, unfortunately. When it comes to running a barge like the Audi S8, it pays to be able to afford its upkeep. The purchase price is just the start of a journey with a car like this. Even though the servicing prices are actually quite reasonable for the first five years at around four and a half thousand dollars for 75,000 Ks of driving, keeping a vehicle like this long-term will mean feeding its appetite for tires, for brakes, particularly if you want to extract the amazing performance that this car is capable of, but also long-term, things like the complex air suspension in this car will all require upkeep. That's not an argument against it, it's just don't go into this thinking that it's going to be maintenance-free, because like any complicated fast car, of course, that isn't true. You do get a five-year unlimited kilometer warranty, however, on the Audi S8. When it comes to fuel consumption, if you baby it, if you drive it softly, it'll give you maybe low double digits in terms of liters per 100 Ks on premium fuel. If you're on it on a country road, expect around 20 liters per 100. All right, let's take the S8 for a drive. There are two things this car does well. I'm gonna start by briefly reminding you of perhaps the obvious, which is that the S8 is an Audi A8, and so it's able to do the dignified, relaxed driving thing very well. This car has excellent noise insulation, even though it has big, wide, fat performance tires, there's very little road noise that enters the cabin on the highway, doing 110 or whatever speed you decide you want to do, frankly. Uh, it's relatively economical, despite having a four litre twin turbo petrol V8 with 420 kilowatts of power and 800 newton meters of torque. It's also got a 48 volt mile hybrid system. It goes into sailing mode and will turn off the engine as you're slowing down. And it does all of the elegant, refined, dignified things that an Audi A8 should do. And in every way, it's highly competitive with the BMW 7 Series or Mercedes-Benz S-Class in doing the limo thing well. It's just that this is short wheelbase. It's really designed for you to enjoy and you can drive it quietly and cautiously on the way to a country estate or the ski fields, and it'll be very good at that. But there's another thing the S8 is very good at, and that's being completely hooned. So let's do a bit of that. <laughs> I 
holy moly. Not only does the S8 make a fantastic sound from its four real exhaust outlets, they're authentic. It's also extremely quick for such a large and heavy car. Audi claims 3.8 seconds. Audi typically doesn't lie or embellish on its performance claims, so we weren't surprised when here at our test track with our professional timing equipment, we were able to get 3.8 seconds out of the S8. 3.83 to be exact, so perhaps we could catch them out on that fraction of a second, but that is mighty impressive, only matched by the strength of the brakes, which are also phenomenal. The fact that the S8 can do the dignified thing, the quiet thing, the refined thing, the comfortable thing, but also be a complete maniac that is happy for you to grab it by the scruff of its neck and drive it. <laughs> As if it's nothing more than a big RS3 sedan is astonishing. Again, it partially comes down to the way Audi Australia have chosen to specify this car, big grippy tires that afford excellent turn in, but also Quattro Sport diffs in the center and at the rear, which means that you can slide out of corners in this car safely and predictably. It is a huge heavy barge with massive amounts of performance. So you've got to kind of have some confidence in order to drive it like you stole it. But you know what? The S8 can do that. And in controlled environments like this one, it is incredibly entertaining to drive it with uh, intent, I think is what we would call it. Of course, you may choose never to do that. But what I want to make clear is that the Audi S8 is not just an A8 with some silver mirrors and a lot of power thrown at it. This is a holistic performance sedan that's able to do double duty as a limousine. And that is an astonishing achievement. The fact that the S8 is totally convincing when you drive it for sport, and then it's able to completely settle into comfort plus mode and absolute quietness for the trip back home is a feat that almost no other car in the world can achieve. This is one of the best all-round vehicles that I have ever tested in a decade of being a motoring journalist. It is truly worthy of one of the highest scores ever awarded by Chasing Cars. So much thought, depth of engineering, sophistication, and talent and attention to detail has gone into the creation of the Audi S8. So while we see our fair share of expensive cars here, to be honest, most of them are pretty overpriced. In the case of the Audi S8, even at a strong price like this, it is somehow not overpriced. It is actually good value for money because to get better than this car, you'll be spending at least double. And even then, we're well into the territory of the law of diminishing returns in automotive. There's not too many cars that are actually better than the S8 at doing all the things well that this car does well. There are some cars which are obviously faster. There are some which are more sporting. There are some which are more economical. There are some which are more comfortable but few of them are able to do all of those things astonishingly well in the way the S8 is able to do them. So this is a good car, putting it simply. Not a perfect car, there are some things it gets wrong. One of the trade-offs of those big wheels is that compliance from the wheels and the suspension could be a little bit better. In Australia, we've got a lot of broken up roads and occasionally you will find a hard edge which makes its way into the cabin. It's pretty rigid, so when you find one of those hard edges, there can be a little bit of sort of plastic noise that reverberates around the cabin, which is a little less than luxurious, but I'd live with it because the car's so good at everything else. Beyond that, I'm clutching at straws. It's my job to be able to find positives and negatives, but there's few cars out there that can do what this car can do. Maybe it'll be the lack of a wagon. There's no such thing really as wagons in this segment, all the cars are sedans. As a super wagon, this thing would be even better because it actually hits a better blend of talent than even the RS6, the vaunted RS6. The S8 is better. So what's my verdict of the 2024 Audi S8? Well, it's my belief that the S8 is one of the most capable, dignified, understated performance vehicles on the market today. It is fit for purpose, a purpose that most of us don't require being a 420 kilowatt super luxury sedan, but for captains of industry that want to drive in opulence and extreme competence, 
without shouting to the world that they have a very large amount of disposable income, the S8 is one of the best ways to do it. Few people will remember this car as it drives by, but you'll know inside that you have one of the very best cars in the world. And for us at Chasing Cars, that is the level of achievement that we look for at this price. So what's your opinion? Let me know down below in the comments. While you're there, hit subscribe and the notification bell if you've enjoyed this video. And as always, thank you for watching Chasing Cars.